YouTube, we're here with an amazing, an exclusive, never seen before, <laughs> me putting together a UMX timber. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, step one, <laughs> unbox it. Step two, look at all the crap you're gonna need. You're gonna need a torch. <laughs> like, what the heck are you gonna need a torch for? Well, we're gonna use a torch, okay? Just wait and see, it's a surprise. We're gonna use this phone. We're gonna use a 20,000 shim, which could also be a knife, okay? That's for later. We're gonna use a measuring stick that has these strange hieroglyphics marked in millimeters, if that's a thing. We're used to these things, inches, but that's okay. For all you foreigners. We're gonna use millimeters. What's the first step we're gonna do, you say? Well, we're gonna mark the CG. We're not gonna check the CG. We don't care about the CG yet. We're only marking it. Now, I learned in my wise old age in RC that marking the CG is, is a good practice. If you do it, it's easier to check when they're in the field. I guarantee you, unless there's a really good reference and you'll forget. So, the first thing I did is I went straight to page 11. I didn't, I didn't look through this at all. I didn't highlight anything. Don't you worry about that, people. <laughs> Went to page 11 and um, it tells you how to put these on. So what I did was I actually skipped back a couple of pages and they start talking about the CG, okay? So the CG right here, 28 millimeters from the leading edge. Now you'll notice I didn't start there. I started here. That's because the leading edge is gonna change when you put the slats on. So be careful you do this in order. Normally it's not a big deal. You'll be able to do it either way. 28 millimeters, okay? So I'm going to look on here, here's 28, okay? Since this is metal, I can mark it with my ultra fine Sharpie, okay? And then from the leading edge, guys, I have a gripe with all manufacturers. You see where they draw this line, guys? Can you tell me the difference between the leading edge here and the leading edge here? I can tell you the difference. It's almost four millimeters. So. The reason we talk about this now is because you have to measure from the right starting point. A lot of times wings are not flat. So you have to use your best judgment. In this case, I have to assume they mean the brunt of the wing, okay? It's not back a lot or forward a lot. So we're gonna go out to the main portion of the wing, okay? Now, 28 millimeters. We've already marked on the ruler, so we'll just slide this back to 28 millimeters. Okay, and look at that. It's right on your carbon fiber spar. So, let's double check. Booyah, right on the carbon fiber spar, which is cool. That's good to know. So now I'm just gonna take, and on this plastic tape here, I'm just gonna write CG, okay? CG. And there's even a little spar receiver there. Okay, this side's gonna be really hard to see because of the letters, okay? By the way, in case you're wondering, and I know you are, the stupid FAA drone registry, okay, went back into effect, whatever that means. So the drone police are out, because this is a drone, we all know, this is a drone, but I guess it is. So when we're all done gluing this up with a battery in it, I'm gonna measure it for you, and I'll tell you if mine is greater than 0.55 pounds. That is the delimination in North America, okay? They also tell you the grams, I don't know exactly what that is. So we'll know if we would have to apply our FAA no before you fly, number, or whatever they give you. So that's up to you guys. Good luck catching me. <clears throat> anyway, so we've got the CG marked. Now we're going to glue the leading edge slats. Super easy. Uh, there's nothing to them. These things, um, you may need to trim them. Give them a shot of that little trim area. I'm going to trim that. There's just one side has just a little extra material right there. You wouldn't have to do this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Just, just because, okay? Just that little teeny bit of trimming. Not a big deal, doesn't bother me. I'd rather trim product away than have a big divot like I did in my uh, Arrow Commander. That was a bummer. Okay, so obviously there's a little arrow shape to these mounts. So you're gonna put CA on there. See that, guys? Those are just gonna line right up in there. Now they say to put the glue on the wing, which I agree with totally. Here's two different types of CA. This is, these are both Bob Smith Industries BSI, okay? Also, this is BSI Kicker, or Instaset, which is also known as an accelerator. It's gonna make this stuff go from wet to cured, chemically cured within a couple of seconds. 
okay? If you're not using this, do yourself a favor. If you're gonna build more than one of these, just go buy some. You're gonna use it, it's awesome. It takes forever to go through it when you're first starting because you don't crash as much as you will when you're like me. Um, I go through a lot of this, modelmasters.com. Good price, multiples, discounts, like 5% when you buy more than one. It's cheaper than the local hobby shop. Although, support your local hobby shop, they're good. So here you go, kicker, this. This is medium, this is thin. Okay, you can use thin, it's fine, as long as it's foam safe, also known as odorless, okay? They will use those terms uh, interchangeably. We're gonna be using medium today. Make sure the tip's clear. Usually the way I do it is I go, and I smell. No, I don't get high, I just smell it, okay? It's important. If, if, it's, if it's not working, it won't smell. This stuff doesn't smell anyway. So the purple stuff, you can tell if it's active, if it's working, okay? Now we're not gonna put a ton on here. Hold on a sec, I've got a little bit of a clog. I'm gonna clear that. Okay guys, so we'll just come in here and just do a small amount. Okay, that's really annoying guys. If you have a tip like this, that looks like it's clear, but it's not, I usually just use a pin to break it free. Okay, I didn't bring my pin up from upstairs, from downstairs, which is really annoying. But little side note, you can take these tips off, you can fill a, a cup, like a glass cup with acetone, and they will clean these like brand new. So one tip, tip of the day, no extra charge for that. All right guys, drill, got a push pin in there. This is what I do 50, 60, 70 times a week. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating, I wish I was, okay? That's in the meantime. Then you can just keep a crappy drill off to the side. But this is what we use. You know, so like when I'm done with my nails, <laughs> then I can use this nail polish remover. The stuff works really good. The other thing is if you get this stuff on your fingers, it takes it off. We'll, we'll link to this. Okay. All right. So this, now it's working. So we're going to go for about two big drips on each. Okay. It's very, it's very subtle and tricky to see. This is gonna slightly strengthen the wing structure, okay? So you can be as sparing as you want. I'm gonna show you the next trick of the day, guys. It's gonna be very simple, okay? You can spray this with kicker now if you're certain of alignment, but you may not be so certain as you want to be. So what I'm gonna recommend you do, because this is awkward, it's just so dang small, there's no room to put your fingers, is to roll this in there, like so. Okay, roll it in just so it falls into the grooves, okay? Once it falls into the grooves, it sounds way more complicated than it really is, but here's the thing, it's a lot harder than it looks to actually drop it squarely in there. And so once you're satisfied, then you do your kicker because your temptation is gonna be, let's spray kicker onto the plastic so that it immediately receives it and then it's set, right? Well. If you get it on the first try, you're doing better than I did. And you've seen my build videos and stuff. I'm not horrible at this stuff. Okay, so, kicker. Just a little bit. Don't go nuts on it. The stuff will screw up finish. Try to avoid here, because that's painted, okay? And when I say it'll screw up finish, I don't mean it's gonna hurt the finish, but what happens is it breaks down the adhesion to the plastic and then you can rub it off. So be careful about that. All right, so now that that's done, we'll just do the other side and we'll come right back and we'll show you how sturdy it is. Okay, so we're just gonna do this other side here. Sorry about that, we had a miscommunication. The camera crew went on a strike. <laughs> you go eat dinner. I put that on backward, guys. The teardrop shape, it wants to be narrow at the top. Okay, sorry about that, that was my bad. I didn't actually get it to stick, which is good. That's why I didn't want to do kicker. Okay. Son of a gun. The CA, guys, is, um, it can be fairly fast acting but if you're careful about the way you apply it, when you get ready to throw your kicker in there, 
you'll be fine. So this one is wanting to kind of pull up on one side. So what I'm going to do is I'll put a little kicker and then I'm going to hold a little kicker. I'm going to hold it down on this side because it wanted to lift. Yep. So now we're in. See if you can give them a really close shot of the plastic. You see that little plastic T-shape? No, it's not what I'm focusing on. There you go. You guys see what I'm talking about? You can get the nozzle of your CA bottle in there and just put a little extra in there. Like on this side, the first one, I didn't get really great penetration to where it's supposed to be. So look at my leading edge slats, guys. You see how this one's drooped down further? That could create some problems. So I'm going to have to redo this side a little bit, okay? So I'm just going to tip it back and just roll it a little teeny bit. And then I'm going to try to just slide it down and see if it goes. Feels like it might have actually just moved successfully. But just be careful because you don't want to break the leading edge slats. Ooh, that's a bad feeling. I just, it must have rotated a little bit on me. So I just moved it a little bit. Okay, so you see how the droop? This is, this is lined up perfectly now. That's what you want. You need to have it square. Okay, cool. That was a lot harder than I figured it might be. But I'm not surprised because I remember when we did that on the big timber, it was kind of a pain. In fact, we came back and had to redo it because we didn't get enough CA in there. So that looks really cool, guys. Um, all right, give us a second. We'll clean this stuff up and we'll come right back. Okay, guys, during the unboxing, you may have heard some grumblings about the slop on these wheels. Forward to backward. It's, it's not a huge problem, but what happens is these little black plastic keepers will actually... Because there's enough play, they're allowed to accelerate into that and push them off. So here's what you do. You don't have to use foam safe on this because it's going on the metal. You just put a little drip of glue and same thing. Just like spray it. But I'm going to show you the alternative method if you want to be more controlled. What you'll do is you'll take the top off just like this. And then you'll just go drip right on there. Boom. Done. Okay. And what that does is that just gives you one extra added layer of protection. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do that on both sides, but we're not going to squeeze it tight. We don't want it to, like, not let it move. We just don't want it to move so far, okay? Because you're going to add, you're going to add friction if you get it too tight. Now, this you don't want to use thin CA for. You want to use the medium or thick even, but they don't make foam safe thick, so you'll probably end up using the same stuff you used for the... Okay, you see how I did that? Now I'm tipping it away, away from the tire. That's important, guys. If you tip it toward the tire, you'll probably get some glue up in there, and then they won't spin free, and you'll be like, Brian, why did you tell me to do that? Look at that. Look how nice and smooth that is. If these things don't spin free, you're going to hate these landing gear. Don't make them bind up, okay? So now, same thing here, guys. We'll do the, the exact same scenario. We'll actually start with the outside for ease. Just one drip. That's kind of a big sloppy one. There we go. And we're going to let that set for four or five seconds. Give it a second to set up. Then we'll slide this back over. We'll push that most of the way in, not tight. And then we'll just come back in here. I'm sorry, camera crew. No, it's okay. Okay, good. one drip. A small drip at that. Boom. Done. And then what you have here is two free spinning wheels that aren't going to be as likely to come off. Believe me, you'll thank me. Oh, one other quick thing. You see these lights? I can't believe it. They're not covered in anything, guys. What the heck? Oh, I'm probably going to pull power on that. Ah, that's an oscillating. That one turns on and off, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Chances are that's controlled by the circuit upstairs, not on the light. So I was hoping I could steal power there, but I don't think I can. So that being said, guys, look. Caution to the wind, guys. Not only will this make the light brighter, but it will make the light not a shorting hazard. Okay. One drip. Watch this, guys. 
boom, right on top. And then when you're done with that one drip, you'll come back in and you'll do another one. And you'll be surprised how crazy huge you can get those little drips. And I'm sorry, I have to move the plane to, to manipulate the drip. I'm just controlling the way that the drip is kind of wanting to fall until such a time that it's set up sufficiently to put another drip of kicker. And what will happen is eventually you'll have this nice little dome of CA and it will be very bright and it will help to emit the light in the directions that you desire to emit the light. But it'll also stop the short circuit hazard. And this is just something that I'm, I'm really surprised that from the manufacturer they, they don't do this already, but whatever. It's not probably the end of the world, it's just the UMX plane. It cost 150 bucks, but still. Okay, so look how much bigger that thing is. I don't know if you can see over the horizontal, or yeah, the vertical stabilizer, I mean. Mm -hmm. See how tall that is now? It's gonna look more like a light, unless like an LED, a surface mount LED. Okay, now. Keep in mind that every little detail you add like this adds weight. Some things are worth the weight. Okay, cool. So now um, we've got that nice dome shape to it. Some of you might not like that, so don't do this step. Same thing here, guys. We're just going to do the first coats, just going to cover from red to black, just like that. Now, what if you have an LED fail? Yeah, true. That would suck. I hope it doesn't happen to you. If it does, then you'll just have to work around it, which means that you'll probably have to pull a little extra wire and then cut that off. But let's just be honest. If they're exposed to the water, especially on the underside of this plane, I can give you a 100% guarantee it's going to fail. See what I've done? I made a big ball of CA. The viscosity is relatively thick on this medium stuff, okay? Touching it twice. The side of this thing won't stick to the CA, by the way. Nice. You see how big that drip is now? It's like a round ball. And who doesn't want balls on their plane? See this, guys? Ooh, one more coming. One more coming, guys. Hey, and I'll be totally honest with you guys. I know that when I build these things, I'm not the fastest. I don't care because my planes are awesome. So if you build this and it takes you five minutes to pull it out of the box and fly it, good job, congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. Um, that's why I like Horizon, because I might spend half an hour, 45 minutes on this plane total. And it'll be flying, it'll be flying beautifully. If I buy a Hobby King plane, it's a project plane, and I know it. Okay, now look at these lights, guys. Does that light look like it's weather resistant to you? Does it look like you'd want to splash that with some water? Hon, what do you think? I'm going to go with no. What? Seriously? Well, unless you like getting... Electronics ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, that being understood, I, I do agree that getting that much of a spread on the water is probably not likely. You could do this with nail polish. You don't have to use CA. CA is stronger. It will get hard. It will stay clear generally speaking, okay? You don't have to do any of this. It's also not flying in the rain. No, it's not about flying in the rain. This is about being in moisture. True. So, and that's the thing, guys. It's not just about flying in the rain. If you fly in the rain, great. But I don't hardly ever fly in the rain. No. But do I land in the snow? Yep. Mm-hmm. Do I fly after it's rained? Yep. Exactly. Oh! I had a drip, guys. I had a drip. Now, if you have a drip, the first thing you'll do is just have your paper towel handy. <clears throat> and you'll just 
catch it before it spreads too much. And then you'll go back in here and you're gonna basically put some more kicker immediately on that spot. Make sure it's totally set and then go back in. I wonder if we need to show the people what it looks like one side versus the other. Okay. Let's do that next. Cause you guys probably think I'm blowing smoke right now or sucking it, but neither, <laughs> neither guys. Truthfully, this makes a big difference. Look at those domes. Can you guys see that? hope so. You see those little bumps, guys? Mm -hmm. Now, keep that focus where it is. I'm going to flip to the other side. You ready? Mm -hmm. Look at the other side, guys. You see, there's no bump. It's yep. just a surface mount LED. There's nothing wrong with a surface mount LED. But let me tell you something. What is an LED? It emits light this way. Not that way. This way. If you shine an LED into a plastic housing, then it shines light that way, that way, that way, that way, that way, that way. It's more intense straight ahead. You'd be amazed how much of a difference it makes. So let's go ahead and uh, plug in the battery so you can see the one side versus the other. And hopefully there's a difference because otherwise I might look a little foolish. <laughs> the first time for everything. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so uh, are you still paused or what? No, do you want me to pause? While we're doing this consideration, guys, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to this front LED. But I want to warn you about this. If you're going to put a tail light, which I am going to put a tail light, probably not today. But you see these two? You could, since those are on solid, you could for sure tap that power and run a line to the back to get your power. But you know what else we could do? We could tap any of the servos to get power too. My experience is uh, the ones that Horizon likes to use are actually um, like a weird 2.7. They'll use like a 2.7 or a two bolt circuit. And so I have a heck of a time finding the right resistive loads to make uh, current limiting resistors. Okay, so I'm just doing the same thing here. The difference is we're gonna leave this one undone on the, the wing so you guys can see what, it, what the difference is. Of course, this stuff isn't in the manual. Why would they put the awesome steps in the manual? They let me do that for them. <laughs> the funny thing is, Horizon technically didn't give me this plane. They didn't give it to me as an advertisement. They gave it to me because my L39 was kilt in action. And so because it was kilt in action, I called and asked them and they replaced it. So I had to pay 10 bucks for this plane. Because the L39 was 130 and this was 150 By the way, that L39 was sweet. Yeah, it was cool. And there was only one deer attack in our video. Do you remember uh, that? That was I so do. weird. Mm -hmm. How I, often do you see a buck chasing you down? I almost died. And okay, yet I'm guys, still here helping you. You'll see that every time I do a drip, I immediately put some kicker on there. If you skip that step, what will happen is eventually the drip will get fat, and then it will go bleh, 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 And it will spill everywhere. It will be a huge mess. Does it make that noise? Yes. Every single time. So... Um, without further ado, batteries. How do we deal with batteries? Well, the first thing you would want to do is open your scissors. Come, look, <laughs> come on, look at this. Second thing you want to do, slip this in here because, yeah, I don't really care about your compliance labels. They're in the garbage. That's the second step. So anyway, um, you wanted to know what the heck this was for. I'm going to tell you right now. It's going to be awesome. Now is the time that we talk CG. The two drips are gonna straddle the CG. It's not gonna make a difference. Maybe it will left to right, but not forward to back, okay? I'm gonna put this battery in here loose, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and plug the battery in, in fact. Oh yes, oh yes. Okay guys, look at that fancy red light, guys. Look at the red light, look at the red light. Can you not see the red light from the side now? Can you not see the red light from the side? Now, I agree, you could probably see it from the side, but look at that, guys. You can really see it good from the side. The nose lights, probably not a huge impact. They were pointed up, not out. You want them to be pointed up. No, you want them to be pointed out the hole, okay? Now, these lights, look at that. Let's give them a demonstration. From the side, you can see the red light all the way to this angle. Now. You may be able to see the, I wish I would have picked the green. It's so much more compelling because the green light's always brighter. Okay, you see that? 
I don't know when you're going to stop being able to see it. This is a foam plane. You're going to be able to see it from all angles because it's foam. But the thing is, I want to just show you one more time. You see that red light? Watch this. You see how it's flashing? Watch this. See what happens when it gets, when it gets covered with that CA? It spreads the light out. And if you really want to spread the light out, you'll take and sand that a little bit. And once you've sanded it a little bit, then you can go back over it one more time and that thing will actually spread the light even more. But I like the way they look like this, so I'm gonna leave it that way. Okay, cool, good talk. Now, <laughs> we're back to talking about drips of CA over here, but we're gonna do the battery first. This stuff is foam, okay? It's multi-layer. What did I get this from? I can't remember. Oh, this comes from like an industrial skillet. It's got one, two, three, four layers. It's squishy. You can cut it really easy with heat. That's what the torch is for. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a small battery holder that's gonna hold this battery, but we gotta get the CG worked out before we can do that. So once you pause it and we'll get this thing kind of rough cut. Yep. All right guys, so this is how you do this. You get your torch, you heat up your shim, okay? Then you can cut this to approximately the size you want. This stuff has weight to it, okay? If you have a fan, use your fan, unless you're into smelling these type of things. Okay, so that's too big. So you're just gonna trim it until it's not too big. <laughs> At which point it'll be the right size, hypothetically. Try not to touch your plane, but if you do, I repeat, do not cry on camera. <laughs> I'll pause. Thank you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna force it Force it gently? Can you force it gently? Mm. Okay. So I forced it gently <laughs> into the hole. Pressing it down. You'll notice one problem, guys. It's a little big. Still a little grande. So what I need to do is I need to trim this down. So our rough cut gets us a starting point and it's, it's gotta be fairly tight or it won't work, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to take this now and you're going to heat this thing up again. Doesn't take much heat. Cut it a little bit, super easy, okay? Cut it a little bit, it's super, super easy. Don't overdo it though. If you overdo it, you might as well not even try. Okay? So we've got that cut at a slight angle. The wire comes out of the main board over here, so we're just gonna slip this in, like so. Plops down nicely. We've got a spot where the motor wind, the motor leads are coming in. We're gonna cut a little relief for that to drop this down just a hair further even, okay? So this thing's still hot, right? So we'll just use that to just cut a little triangular area out, okay? Not hot enough for my taste. Sorry. Get it nice and hot. Okay, very simple. Now you've got your opening. That's gonna allow your motor windings to not be an issue. There's a connector there too, guys. It's not just the motor leads. There's another connector back here, but I think that connector is small enough it's not gonna be an issue. Look how nice and tight that fits, guys. We have one more connector back here. Let's go ahead and take out a little chunk for that. Doesn't need to be huge. Okay. Nice, nice fit. Okay, now let's test to see if the canopy will go back in there. Ooh, we're so close, guys. Now you could put Velcro on your batteries if you're into that sort of thing. I don't have a problem with people that want to do that, but I use my batteries in way too many planes. I don't want Velcro on all four sides. So this is a good way to get around doing that. Okay, so every time I make a cut, it gets more refined, cut a little bit least, a little bit less each time, or you might find that you've cut too much away. If you do, it's not the end of the world, just try again. Okay, this stuff is free, it's garbage, literally. Okay? Ooh, we're so close. It's stuck on there now, but I feel like we're depressing it some. Now, if you're really concerned about this and you wanted to try to like measure it and stuff, you could do that too. 
but I think that'd probably be a waste of your time. So what I'm gonna do is I will go ahead and take just a touch more off the surface this time, okay? I'm just gonna go like this and just touch the surface a little bit, okay? Just like that, done. Now we should be able to get the canopy on. Until you get that canopy on, don't even think about cutting a battery hole yet. You gotta get this thing in, you gotta make sure the canopy sits in there before you even think about getting the, uh, the battery hole cut. Look how nice that went, guys. Goes right on, no issues, okay? So now that we're in there, we're gonna make a hole for the battery to be received. Just so you know, let's pause it. I'm gonna get the scale so you guys know how much this weighs. Okay, guys. Doesn't even register on the kitchen scale, okay? So that's eight grams, back to zero. Doesn't even register, okay? A few milligrams, guys, it's no weight. That's probably lighter than your Velcro, times two. <laughs> now I'm just exaggerating. But really, it, this, this will work nicely, because then you don't have to worry about uh, getting the battery in the right spot. Okay, so now the second part you're gonna worry about is where you wanna position the battery. Now for me, I figured out the CG while we were paused, and I'll show you what I did. I took the battery, I laid it in there with the connectors in the approximate position to where they're gonna be. See the battery? The battery's lined up right on the edge there. Now we're not worried about center of mass, the left and right, we're just worried about center of gravity, tail, tail to tail. We're putting our middle finger on the little rib. It's close, it's pretty, pretty level, okay? So basically what we want to do is we want to try to make this battery up against this surface there, okay? So now what I need to do is I need to transpose that mark onto my foam, okay? So what we're going to do is we're just going to push this into where it's in its home seated position. Now I tend to fly my planes just a touch on the nose heavy side. Okay, you don't want to go too crazy on small planes because they will bite you. Okay, see that little mark there? That mark is all we're dealing with now. So now I just want to have an approximate position of where I want to cut. So just slightly in front of that. We're going to go there. We're going to go there. And we're going to make a pocket that's approximately this size. Now you'll notice we've removed some material here. If we remove material here, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. You don't have to have the battery on the bottom, but you could if you wanted to. That's all fine. Try not to drop that on the floor because it's probably hot and burning. <laughs> Okay, see how it's smoking? Clean paper towel, wipe it off. It'll stop smoking. Make sure it doesn't catch on fire before you throw it back in the garbage can. Cut on the inside of your line because the melting will still happen. And then what you can do is you can either cut it out like that or you can dig it in like this, okay? Okay guys, so you can just slide this in and then cut that little piece out. Just rip it out. And then your battery is allowed to sit in there. Now, if you're careful about the way you do it, you can cut a relief on either side for that wire to come out. This is super, super easy stuff, guys. But it will make your life easier as you're flying this plane, okay? So I always, every time I get a UMX plane, I gotta figure out a way to keep the battery from falling out. It's not gonna hardly add any weight. It's definitely worth the effort. Okay, cool, so now let's see how this fits. Obviously it can come out that direction. So the other option is you make this deeper, okay? And that's, that's what I'm gonna do on this one. So watch what I'm gonna do. Knife it through, knife it through, Knife it through, knife it through, okay? Very simple. You've got your pocket to receive the battery. And then you basically just stuff the battery in there and it works perfectly every time. So this can be glued if you want. I'm probably not gonna glue mine until I have a chance to just make sure everything's gonna work out well for CG. But once you're satisfied with the way it flies, then you can go ahead and tack this in with a little bit of uh, foam tack glue. Foam tack, not CA. CA would not work well for this. You could CA it between here and here, but I wouldn't recommend it, okay? 
So there you have it. Now let's just double check our, C, our center of gravity, okay? So we'll stick that on there. Remember how I said, just slightly nose heavy, okay? I think we're good. So now, radio setup. Yep, okay. All right, guys, so here's the next step. We're gonna do the radio setup, okay? So you get your manual and you flip to the page that looks like this. There's gonna be something that says transmitter setup. Okay, it's important to set up the transmitter right. There are some subjective things that happen and then everything else is pretty much not subjective on a UMX plane. Okay, so we're gonna click. This is a DX18. Go up just a little, there you go. DX18, scroll all the way down, system setup. Yes, that turns off our RF. We're gonna go to model select. We're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. It says add new model. You can also go to the add, um, edit, whatever, utility. Okay, you wanna create a new model? Yes, create. All right, first thing I do, check the model type. It's an airplane, okay? Data will be reset, sure it will. Model name, Acro. That's how you know it was a brand new one under most circumstances, but if you're like my, my friend Esteban who does cameos for me all the time, he, uh, he leaves them all as acro until he's at the flight field and then I have to name them. <laughs> so scroll in, Timber UMX or UMX Timber, whatever you guys want to call it. And if you want to pause it. Okay. All right, so it says Timber UMX. Now we'll hit back and we'll go to aircraft type. See how it says normal and normal. That refers to the type of wing and the type of tail. So what they say in the manuals is they say, set the aircraft type to wing one aileron, one flap. So you click on here and then you scroll over until you get to that. One aileron, one flap. And that refers to one channel of controls for the ailerons and one channel of controls for the flaps and then normal for the tail, okay? Now, if you scroll over to next, you can change this picture to a plane that's more commensurate to what you're trying to show. So that's yeah, pretty close. Now it may have floats. Okay, so now, uh, leave all switch settings at their default values, the gear switch, channel five will control safe mode. Okay, fine. We can test that and reverse it after we get it turned on and off. Um, I usually use the gear switch uh, for safe, and then if I have panic, I'll use panic on the bind. I, I don't ever use panic though, I hate panic, because it doesn't unpanic for about two or three seconds until you let go. So you let go and then it's like flying into the wall. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do now is we'll go down to channel assign, just double check. It looks like gear is gonna be AS3X safe. Auxiliary run is gonna be flaps. Okay, so we don't need to mess with that at all. So it's gonna reboot. Um, at this point, the radio is on. We could go ahead and bind the, ch uh, bind the plane, but what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna look at this. Set all transmitter programming to a blank acro, okay? So we've already done that. So now basically what we need to do is we need to go in here and do our safeguards. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna set up timer, which what do they say for timer? Six minutes, okay? So scroll down here, six minutes, and I use one out, active, tone and vibrate, okay? One out means as soon as the stick is moved over 25%, it will activate the timer and not deactivate until it's out, okay? And then you have to hit clear to clear it out. Um, the only time you don't want to do that is like if it's a glider and you have a lot of glide time where you're off the throttle or a helicopter, okay? And helicopters, you could just do a one out too. It just depends on how you want to use your power. Okay, so they're recommending um, one other thing. Where's my motor cut? Throttle cut. There we go. I'm going to go from inhibit to flip this, which is switch H. Whoops. And negative 130 is not necessary. We don't have a uh, combustion engine. So when we have the stick down, throttle cut is on, it works. When throttle cut is off, the throttle does work, okay? If throttle were engaged and we hit throttle cut, it would bring it back to zero, okay? That's how that works. All right, so back to the regular mode, you'll notice the timer is started. It starts every time regardless of throttle cut. Throttle cut is on. That's how you keep your fingers from getting dislodged from your body. <laughs> Okay, guys, one thing real quick. Servo setup. Don't set these over 100%. You'll screw up the linear servos. In fact, some people have thought that moving them back 1% or 2% is a good idea. I don't know if I agree with it, but it's probably worth a shot, okay? Gear is not a, that's not going to be a control channel. Uh, flaps is, I'll set it to 98. And this, oh wait, 
Yeah, flaps is auxiliary one in this case because we have one flap and one aileron. So it automatically assigned FLP instead of AX1, okay? So, but flaps take, let's go ahead and set that up. Flap system. Inhibit, we're gonna set it to switch B. That's what I always use. Then position one is going to be according to the drawing. It says position one is negative 90. So we'll go position one is negative 90. You'll, you'll notice it's negative 90 plus 90. That's so you can use up the whole throw on the servo. I'm going to go to 98. Position 2 is going to be, in fact, I'm going to set it to 100 and 100, okay? Which means they're actually going to be pointed up a little bit. We'll just evaluate that in a minute. They don't say any elevator correction. Okay, elevator correction means that for the deployment speed, so in my case, I'm going to set this to, I'll set it to 2 seconds deployment speed, okay? That means for 2 seconds, it's going to go from negative 100 to plus 100. So it'll take one second to go between steps in this case. That means that the elevator correction will happen at the same rate. It'll take approximately one second for that to happen. Okay, so now let's walk out of that menu. Let's make sure our throttle cuts on. Let's make sure our bind plug is ready. Power's off, bind switch is ready. We're gonna plug in the power and we're gonna wait for flashy lights to happen. Flashy lights on there. Waiting for flashy lights, ready to bind. Binding, DSMX 22 seconds, 22 milliseconds. Still binding. Now you'll notice that didn't work, guys. Why did it not work? Except that it did, technically. Flaps, flaps. Oh, gorgeous, guys. Gorgeous! Oh, by the way, get a shot of that. I did that while you guys were sleeping. <laughs> that was the only one you didn't see me do. Okay, now watch this, watch this. One other cool thing. You remember how we set up this battery so that it would be held by this little foamy thing? Well, watch this. It'll fall out like this if you vibrate it enough. But because there's a hood that's holding it down, it won't fall out because there's nowhere for it to go. Okay? If you hit that hard, which I'm going to do it, see? It's still not coming out. It's not going to shift. It's not going to change your CG. I am so tempted to fly this through the living room, but my wife is filming. <laughs> Elevator, rudder, aileron, aileron. Looks like some built-in differential there. That's pretty cool. Differential means that this one goes up higher than that one goes down. That means the efficiency of the airflow in here is going to be used wisely. See? There's, there's a higher pressure. There's more airflow here than there is on the bottom. So you move this one up more than you move that one down. Do you see how that works? That's called differential. It's evidently programmed in on that, not on this, okay? Elevator, rudder, okay, throttle. We are hitting, our spinner is hitting our, our spinner was hitting our prop, or excuse me, our prop was ru running into the nose piece here, okay? Let's see if it's doing it still. Oh, it's so gorgeous! Look at that, guys. Okay, now, let's assign safe. You'll notice it's chattering. That's AS3X. It's not safe. It's not safe. Safe is not on. Or, or is safe on? Safe is on. Safe is attempting to level the crack. Here's how you can tell. Watch this. Easiest spot to tell. Safe is on. Now safe is off. Just AS3X. I want to switch my modes. Come over here and let's look at this, guys. Throttle cuts on, throttle cuts tested. Okay, I want this to be safe off, safe on, okay? So I'm gonna go into servo setup and I'm gonna to go to travel to reverse and I'm gonna go there. Okay, so now it's reversed, okay? So now safe is off, meaning you don't hear it, right? Now it's on. It's trying to level the craft. It's gonna find the quickest path to level. That's why it does this dance right at this point, okay? Pretty cool stuff, guys. If I just took this and just threw it as hard as I could across the room, it'd go in a straight path right into the wall, which would be kind of fun to watch, I realize. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> so, one last critical detail, and then we'll let you get back to your busy lives. Go ahead and pause it. Okay. All right, guys. One last really quick tip. When you're painting your wingtips, 
which I don't know if you guys paint your wingtips. I always paint my wingtips of my propellers. Be real careful about how heavy you get them because these things are, you know, they're quite light in the, in the spectrum of models. So don't get too crazy on how much glue you, or how much paint you use. Now let's look at, can you get this to focus for me? Yeah, so. It's called flat yellow. Yep. And then it's testers enamel. I, I use this for my J3 cup touch up paint. If you just use a little bit of this green frog tape, it works really nice for this sort of thing. There's a little bit of texture to these plastic pieces. And so I found that it does a better job of sealing off. You can just eyeball this on the UMX planes, but just be careful you don't get too heavy. Um, you'll throw off the balance of the prop. Okay, so this is a super easy step. It shouldn't really come as any surprise. When we're done with this, we'll set up dual rates and expo. Okay, dual rates and expo have to do with the amount of deflection of each of the control surfaces. You can probably come behind me and get a little better shot. Mm -hmm. or... Okay, now I paint front and back of my props because believe it or not, I like being able to see where that thing is spinning when I have my hands in close proximity. I suppose that'd be a good idea. So you don't have your like, fingers chopped off. Mm, fingers are helpful. Yes, they are. <clears throat> okay, so, and this stuff will last you forever. And usually I just use a Q-tip because I'm too lazy to actually get a brush out. And again, in my experience with these little detail projects like this, now one other thing you could do on this to really make this thing more dressy would be if you wanted to paint the spinner instead of having it black, you could paint it silver. But the spinner is the first victim. Wait till you have some damage and then do it in my opinion. Okay, obviously don't spin that up right away. Let it dry. Um, I am going to peel this off first, just because it does tend to help a little bit with the finish results or the, give me a shot of that if you can. See how nice and clean that is, guys? I cannot focus today. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna peel this off and guys, we'll unpause it here in just a second, give you a final shot of it. Okay, so that's the back is also gonna be painted, just so you guys see that. Okay, so you wanna let that dry sufficiently. Now let's talk about dual rates and expo while that's drying. Okay, interestingly enough, I didn't need to activate safe select, okay? Normally you would have to do this thing where you put both sticks down like this, and then you'd have to toggle it. Well, I didn't have to do that. That's what the manual said, guys. I'm just telling you, the Aero Commander was supposed to have safe according to the manual. I was talking about how good the documentation is from Horizon. Okay, so let's talk about dual rates and expo. Okay, dual rates and expo. So you just click in there, scroll down, whoops. Dual rates and expo. Now you notice it has a switch setting. I always switch mine to the same switch. Some people don't like that. If you don't like it, do it your way, okay? Elevator, there's nothing wrong with having a different way of doing it, guys. I like one switch that I can get too quick, especially on a brand new plane. Now, what do I do? Every single one I do the same way, essentially. Expo, for the first setting, let's call it 10 on rudder. Let's call it 20, and then let's call it 30 with less rates, okay? Now, it calls for 70% for the dual rates, meaning that when you flip the dual rates to that setting, you would have less output on the actual control surface. I don't like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna depend on, on Expo before I depend on dual rates, but I do bring it back just a touch on the top setting. I usually write in this setting, okay? Now you'll notice something about the order. 10, 20, 30. It's just giving me aggressively more or aggressively less. I start in the middle, I fly in the middle, I make my adjustments after the maiden flight to the middle with some back off and some higher up, just depending on what I want to try to accomplish with the plane. Okay, so elevator, we'll actually start with 10 on that. Um, I'm gonna go 15, and then we'll go five, okay? Actually, we'll, let's just do the same. Let's just do the same. Let's just do 10, 20, and 30, okay? 
Oops. Okay, and then we'll back this off to 90, okay? Then we'll go over to ailerons. We'll set the top setting to, oh, we'll set the top setting to 30. We'll set the middle setting to 20, which this doesn't seem very creative all of a sudden. <laughs> and the bottom setting to 10. The top setting having also backed off the dual rates, okay? Now, when somebody asks me in the comments about the dual rate setup, I want you to be aware that the manual recommends a low rate and a high rate not a three position setting. I understand that. I don't do this. I don't do high and low rates. I think it's a waste of time. Expo is the way to go. If you have a programmable radio and you're using high and low rates, just use Expo. You can just turn up more Expo. Then you don't give up anything. You can move the stick all the way to the edge. It's gonna move the control surface all the way. If you're coming in, you're gonna crash into somebody. You can move all the way to the side. Who cares, okay? If you go to dual rates, you're not gonna make the turn, okay? It might make it a little easier to land, but just set your expo higher for that switch. You know, instead of 30, do 70. Might screw up the way the automatic leveling in the AS3X likes to behave, but it'll work fine. So that's what I do. That thing is beautiful. I really like it. And look at those flaps. Oh, it's so gorgeous. So gorgeous. See? Oh, that's so cool, guys. Do you want to get any other shots of this? Not unless you want to turn the light down so you can see the lights a little better, yeah, but you can see them pretty good. Um, you know, pause it. Okay. So there's your ailerons, elevator, rudder, flaps. Can you bring it down low so they can see the flaps deploy? Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Big flaps. Okay, now come back over here. Let's see what we can see over here. Looks like we'll have good ground handling with this thing too. Takeoff flaps, landing flaps. Now, because of the washout on the wing tips, I want you to be aware. You guys see what I see? It's gonna block your view of the opposite side light. Now that shouldn't be a big issue because for practical purposes, you're gonna be flying above you most of the time and look what you can see. Okay, unless the wheels are blocking them, which could happen. So, and that looks so cool. I just don't want to run it under power because that paint's still wet. But look at that sweet thing. That is just so cool. And then all we got to do is get one tail light, and this thing is going to be gorgeous. And we'll get you guys a, a video on that right after we go through the process of doing our standard maiden flight. Um, maybe we'll get you a dark flight. The weather has been horrible, horrible. So. Um, we'll do our best as quick as we can. Thanks for watching guys. Really appreciate your support Don't forget to like the channel or excuse me like the video and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you back for more